my mother gave me an ultimatum and I cried. And then I myself had to make the choice. I didn't want to be kicked out of the house and live as a male. This is just like my story on how I knew I was trans and like the whole process. Like I know there's a lot to take in because I'm speaking really fast and I'm just trying to get everything in here out really quick. This video is not scripted by the way, so just deal with whatever it comes with. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> hey guys, and welcome back to yet another video. My name is Zariah Athena Rose. You guys can call me Zari. I am a transgender female, uh, came out last year, six months in my transition. I'm enjoying it. And today in this video, we're gonna be talking about how did I know I was transgender and slash came out to my parents. Um, so yeah, this is gonna be quite a video. I just got a lot of energy right now. It's like 2 a.m. I just came back from work and I just thought, you know what, let's make a video. So here is a video. So first of all, I wanna get into how did I physically know in my brain that I was transgender? Well, I knew when I was five years old that I was trans because the way I wanted to interact with other people made them feel uncomfortable and I wasn't able to actually connect with a lot of people. Right, so it was quite difficult for me to do that, boys and girls as well, because like, you know, I'm a boy and I'm acting like a girl and it's kind of like weird to the girls, you know. And growing up, I was like a very social person and I was very outgoing, right? So I didn't really have social anxiety and I thought it would be easy to make friends. Like I was able to make friends, but I just couldn't really be my authentic self, truly, because I was consciously aware of my surroundings, the people around me, and my teachings from my family. So I was like back and forth with a lot of my characteristics. So sometimes I would be feminine, sometimes I would ask ma masculine, you know, with the guys. And it started to get exhausting, you know, over an extensive period of time growing up. Because growing up in a Christian religious family, you know, it's a sin to be transgender or to be gay. And, you know, it's abomination and all of that. So I had to try my best to fit the characteristic to please my family. And that's what I have been literally been doing for the past 20 years of my life and it has caused me so much pain, anxiety and depression that I just couldn't deal with it anymore. And it was at my high school point, the tipping point is when I actually fully realized what was going on with me because I just felt way too fake for the people that I was around. Like I was just being this person. I just had this persona that just didn't really give off authenticity of how I felt and how I wanted to portray myself because I knew from the get-go when I was young that I was this girl that wanted to just live life and be free without having to be like oh I have to go to play with trucks I have to do this I have to do that I have to like hip-hop like I got I have to like all these kind of things right which naturally some of the things I do personally do like just because you know it's it's just cool. Like, I like digging in the ground and stuff like that because, like, archaeology. Archaeology is, like, awesome, right? So, I did have some sort of um, boy traits, you could say, but traits are just traits. Like, anyone can have them. It doesn't mean that they are whatever. Only until it comes to realization to the specific person. Like, I'm not trying to get anyone triggered or anything. This is just my experience. But like, everything is different for everyone and how people interpret other people's experiences. So this is just my experience. So I did have some, what mo most would say, masculine or boy traits. But the way I portrayed myself and wanted to identify socially was very feminine and girly to say, right? So. I've been living this like whole big facade, you know, for the last 20 some years, you know, being like, oh, I'm this dude, you know, what's up, dude, and all that kind of stuff. And then, you know, just like, just trying to be so relatable to other people that I'm not really helping myself, you know, and I've just been in such a big depression for a long time. So, Mentally, I knew I was trans when I was five, 
but when I actually started to actually try out on different clothes and stuff like that, I was 10 years old. So I would actually sneak out of my house where like no one was home and my auntie, she had some clothes out hanging and I was like, oh cool, you know, I just want to try this on, see what it would look like on me and stuff like that. I got caught once and I was corrected for it and I did not like it whatsoever right so I started actually showing physical things very subtly when I was around about 10 years old right so a lot of my stuff was like during five was mental and then things I started showing was around about 10 now I already, at this point, I already knew I was transgender. It was just more of like, how am I going to try and fit in society and try and keep this in the closet because I was so closeted and so scared and depressed on the inside, trying to keep my self-worth and my self-identity strong in these hardships that I was going through, right? So I was trying on these clothes. I got caught once and I didn't do it again. And then I tried on like some of my mom's tops and stuff like that. It was really, really fun. I felt so cool about myself. I felt so much self-worth, so much strength because like my mom is a very strong person. She's been through a lot and you know, I really admire her and her ambition. And just me trying on her clothes when I was younger just made me feel so much more powerful, you know? And I really did look up to my mother a lot, you know? So. There was a lot of things going on growing up that had that contributed to how I am now, right? But like I said, mentally I knew I was trans when I was five. At 10, I started kind of like showing signs that I was trans towards my family, but that was not taken well. So they were like, no, don't do that. They smacked me. They did, you know, the general corporal, corporal punishment kind of thing, I cried and so forth. It wasn't until I went overseas at 16 to go meet my biological father is when everything, everything fully changed. Like I already knew in my head already that I was trans. So I was like, all right, cool, what am I gonna do? You know, it wasn't a pleasant experience I had meeting my biological father for, father for the first time, but I can tell you it was fun because I got to stay in my cousin's room and she had clothes in her bedroom. Now, no one ever knew of this, ever. So it was just me locked in a bedroom, barely eating because that was just life there and makeup and clothes that I could work with. So I was like wearing a lot of my cousin's clothing and this is all closeted as well. And I would go out sometimes and just, you know, just go for walks in the street at night. I know, right? Sketchy, at night. Well, I just didn't want to be seen by anyone because it is a Catholic-based country. So, you know, if I, whatever, I could, you know. So I had to really, really be careful of my surroundings when I would go out at, um, sneak out at night, you know, in heels and the girls' clothes and stuff. There was one time there, there was one time a homeless person actually saw me and he was like, oh, hey, cutie. I'm like, oh, hi, how are you? But I was like, yeah on the inside but I was recognized and I felt so so happy actually I was quite recognized from some other people on the street when I was overseas in my home country it's called Trinidad and Tobago you can look that up if you want but that was the first time I actually started feeling like myself like my euphoria like I felt so much gender dysphoria socially and physically at a young age, I had nothing else but to suppress it because I knew of the consequences and that was the reason why I didn't show a lot of my signs until a later age. Because usually, you know, the whole thing is like, oh, I already knew you were transgender, blah, 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 because, you know, you're a four and you're acting a certain way. I act in a certain way because I knew I was going to get it and I wasn't having that. I was a scared little girl on the inside for my life, like, how can I live if I could be kicked out, like, at a young age? Because that's just what was taught, that was just their mindset, that's just how it is in cultural families. And if you are in a cultural family, I'm here to tell you I am here for you, and you will get through it. Just pray, pray, pray a lot, and just try your best to just try and live the best as you can. 
with what you have because that's what I had to do. I just had to like just find my own private times to put myself mentally in that wonderland of being a girl and being feminine. Like. The only other times I do remember, which only just came up to me like right now, that I was able to provide or be that kind of person was when I was in primary school, right? So it was around about year four, year five is when I started like playing house. Like I always wanted to be the mother and you like nurture all the children, you know, I'll be the one to cook for everyone and stuff like that. So I always played those roles in high, in high school <laughs> who's playing house in high school i mean i always played those roles when it came to like my close knit friends that i was able to make which were also low-key still trying to figure themselves out so i was actually fortunate enough in primary school this was when i was about 10 10 or 11 coming into like year five um, when I was starting to play those roles when I'm in school playing with my friends so I was for like I said fortunate enough to have people who were still trying to figure themselves out just as much as I was you know so like I didn't know the whole idea of transgenderism or anything like that I knew there were gay people you know but like every time I heard of them or seen of them was always on TV and you know what my parents were there and they're like oh nasty man blah 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 God doesn't like this and here I am on the inside I'm like oh my god such judgment it's just like leave them alone they did nothing they're just being themselves you know and that was one of the other times I also realized oh my god there is literally something wrong with me like in a good way <laughs> so yeah there was a lot of things gradually growing up that led to this point but it was when i went overseas to go meet my biological family is that when i fully transformed so <laughs> i wouldn't say fully transformed i just started to become a lot more myself right so went over there started dressing up my biological father saw that i was wearing makeup and i was like oh no i'm just trying to look like Bruno Mars because like i was like hella into Bruno Mars as well you know and like i am so sorry i'm just playing with my hair like that i just love doing it but either way what i'm saying is like i got caught wearing makeup by my biological father it's like why is that what are you doing that's a girl thing i'm like no i just want to look good you know leave me alone and um then he kind of like forced me like to wipe it off and stuff like that and that was like one of the most disappointing parts of my life when i was there is because it wasn't like accepted Obviously, I'm in like a Catholic family, cult family, and my dad is, my father is a ma chairman. So, yeah, he's not taking that. I moved back overseas, back here, and I came back a different person. Like, I had skinny jeans on, I had tighter fitting clothes, I even had like more feminine clothing. My family did not take that in a good light, so I kind of like started. When I came back, is like my official starting of like my closeted transition i guess so i was like buying clothes in secret or stealing them from the local store yes i will have a separate video talking about this if you want me to make that video i will do that for you leave a like on this video i don't know let's get this video up to 50 likes and i'll talk about me stealing clothes because i just wanted to feel so good about myself not about stealing about the clothes okay so i started like buying and stealing clothes and stuff to make myself feel good and then and then all of a sudden i had them like in a little box you know so no one could find it it was found by my stepdaddy put it out of you if i ever want to see and i'm like oh my god why the hell are you doing this you know and it was just like a very traumatic experience because it's like this is my privacy like i'm just trying to be me in my own space so leave me the f alone like i'm just trying to be myself and then here i have my stepdad and he's like no this is an abomination i got beat for it my mom wasn't accepting of it it wasn't accepting at home so it was just a big 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 fireball and this has happened multiple times like i was buying stealing clothes and stuff like that makeup like for a long time and i was always exposed for about it and even on instagram 
when I tried to create my own profiles. It's like it was always found. I was always scorned about it, right? But like I did it all the time. It was only until I was when I came back from overseas, so I was about 17, that I predominantly started showing so many signs that I was transgender to my family. I never said it. I never recognized it, but I knew that that was me. Right, so that had been going on for a lot uh, for a long while of me trying to present as female privately, and also sometimes at work as well. So when I was working, some of my friends kind of like knew that I was different, you know, that I was kind of like I'd be wearing things underneath my clothes to kind of like show that I had breasts and that like I had tighter forming pants and stuff like that. So um, my coworkers knew that like there was something going on here right and I didn't come out to them or anything like that I just kind of kept it like to myself so then they could be like are you questioning kind of thing and that was just how that would went about but most of my time of like showing symptoms or showing signs that I'm trans happened between 16 to 18 that was the big time right but it was never really something fully spoken about like like I came out and said that I'm trans and this is me and I'm gonna live my life um, there was one point though I remember very vividly and this was a traumatic experience of mine which I hope no one else on this planet experiences but we were having a big argument in our home about me being wearing these clothes and stuff and my mother specifically told me if this is what you really want right I will help you move out, help you find a job, and you have to live on your own. Like, that happened. That literally happened to me. Like, my mother gave me an ultimatum, and I cried. And then I myself had to make the choice. I didn't want to be kicked out of the house and live as a male. So I was then living as a male for a, a little while, but still secretly, closetedly living as a female at the, during the night when I would make, like, my YouTube videos back then. Or if I'm like going to work or whatever, right? So I was still low key, like um, really trying to live as me, af even after that ultimatum, right? So after the ultimatum, a lot of that kind of stuff died down and rekindled back a lot later. It's pretty much the exact same thing as I told you, you know, all my clothes laid out for everyone to see, my underwear, bras and stuff like that. It's like, why are you doing this? And then I had to confess that I was stealing them as well. It, 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 was, it was just drama, you know, and it's literally been drama my whole entire life for my family, right? I'm gonna make a separate video on how I dealt with that, so which means, you know, anxiety and depression but this is just like my story on how I knew I was trans and like the whole process like I know there's a lot to take in because I'm speaking really fast and I'm just trying to get everything in here out really quick but yeah that's literally my life story on how I knew I was trans and the drama behind me being trans I might just call this I might just title this video the drama of me being of me trying to come out. It wasn't until recently I actually came out to my parents about almost two years ago now um, and I'm glad that I actually fully said to my family two years ago that yes I am transgender this is my life this is how I want to live it and this is me and after all the drama that I've had in my past it's kind of like known that this is what I've been trying to tell you without telling you and I was like okay it's gonna be a difficult change it's gonna be a difficult process you know like we're all gonna be transitioning together like we knew you as Abraham for like 20 years so doing this transition is not gonna be easy like especially for my dad and my brothers is like yo like your brother just died like literally that's like that's what it's like and then now you see this new person and you just don't know how to act how to be and it's new to everyone so I totally wholeheartedly understand when I came out that it wasn't just my journey but it's also their journey as well so I can't that I can't just 
force them to call me by my new name or to address me as she and her like they knew me for freaking 20 years as a dude so it's gonna take some time but that's pretty much my story on my coming out I guess and the drama of my coming out and how I knew I was trans I know I'm just kind of like rambling talking really quick things are just going crazy but yeah that's pretty much my story really so I told them I came out and I actually came out to work I will make a separate video on how I did that um, it was just really funny it caught everyone off guard but yeah it was great but my mom's reaction because my mom knew a lot of things first before I told everyone I came out to my mom as gay uh, on the way to work and she was like yeah I know you know I had noticed that you know take an attraction to men and you never really felt happy when you tried to date a woman and yeah like she knew right and my mom's very progressive so I told her that I was gay I lived as gay for like maybe like five months or like three months and I was like no this is not happening and then I came out to my mom and I was like mom I am transgender and this is my life and this is how I want to live it and she was like yeah fine just make money and I was like what that's your reaction just make money <laughs> make you money I was like yeah she, she was like I will love you for you no matter what choices you make this is your choices how you want to live just live your life to the fullest as God wants you to because at the end of the day unconditional love means that I need to love, love you no matter what no matter my choices and she loves me even though I've made these choices and she's a hardcore strong Christian that will never break her foundation like she's one of those hardcore ones and for her to see me call me Zariah and just have to see me like this every day like I know it hurts her a lot but she's I just love her for it and that's unconditional love you know there shouldn't be any conditions on love if you are going to be like oh I'm only gonna love you if you wear boys clothes when you play with trucks and stuff like that it's like it doesn't work that way I will love you no matter what. That was literally my mom's reaction when I told her in the car. You know, so I guess you could say that this is also a slash coming out video all in one. This video is not scripted, by the way, so just deal with whatever comes with. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> and yeah, that's pretty much my story, really. It was then even I technically you could say I came out at the best time after all my our drama where I wouldn't have to go through that again you know so yeah I'm happy that I'm out my parents and my brothers my sisters are happy that I'm out my sister you know we have a really fun bond I will feature her on the channel um soon very soon I don't know when but I will and uh yeah I'm just literally going off of the top of my head like there's no script I try to keep my, my content as raw as possible and in the retro aesthetic so if you kind of like this kind of content please let me know and I could just keep it this way because it, it just feels like that connection was between you and me that we're just like high school friends or we're just primary school friends like I am doing this so that I can connect with other people that has been gone through maybe similar things as me or worse. Uh, anything like that I can relate I can help you with those that kind of, with that kind of stuff even though I may be new I have gone through a lot of drama to say the least so yes I am more than eligible to help you with drama if you need which I will be doing in my next video so yeah as the title says this is my coming out how did I know I was transgender video and yeah so thank you for dropping by. <laughs> this is just so awkward. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. There will be more to come. Like I've mentioned in my last one, which I will put over here. Um, I will be filming in a retro form. So it's gonna keep, I'm gonna keep that retro tone throughout all of my videos. And also as well, it's not gonna be just transgender related stuff. I will be also be doing reviews, fashion, vlogs, 
all that kind of stuff. Stay tuned, I will also be doing a review on this bad girl right here. This lace front wig is amazing. I bought it from um, Milk and Honey. I'll leave them in the description down below. But thank you for dropping by. If you like this video, subscribe right here. <laughs> like this video. I don't know if you like that. I hope you like that. I don't know. <laughs> and um, if you want to see my other video that I made, it's right here. Thank you for dropping by. Hope to see you guys in the next one. Bye.